Welcome back. Today we're going to do a time-lapse review of all of our progress to date. Well, this is our 25th episode, and we thought it would be a good time to do a review of all of the progress that we've done toward the house build. And so we're going to do a time-lapse progress report and provide some of you who may be new to the channel with some context for some of the things that we've been doing. I won't go into enormous detail in any particular section because you can always go back and see the individual episodes for the details. So this will really be a, a high level summary and again, more of just setting the stage and providing context for the individual videos we regularly post. The start for us was probably about three or four years ago now. We decided we wanted to move out of the city and move someplace a, a bit more remote and uh, we found a piece of property in Kentucky here, about 26 acres, very hilly. And uh, here you've seen we cut in the driveway uh, from the woods. This was all raw woods when we bought it. Uh, here we're cutting in the house site and almost immediately we ran into bedrock. So we had to dig into the bedrock to get the house situated uh, in the way that we wanted it, um, dug in the footers. And this was a challenge in and of itself. Uh, we poured the footers during the rainy season, so this was about three or four weeks of fun uh, because we just got caught in a place where we couldn't pour and we just had to keep pumping out water from the footer holes. We had a real hard time finding concrete contractors where we are. We live in a pretty remote area, so there just aren't a large number of contractors, and so we ran the gamut from people that didn't know what they were doing to people who charged three times what the job was worth. We ended up finding somebody who we believed could get the job done and, and do so for a reasonable price. We still ended up having some problems with that concrete contractor and we had to actually end up letting him go and um, had somebody else finish up the, the main body of the work. But we had a few issues, but nothing we couldn't overcome. Um, again, more details in the individual videos, but we were able to get all of the concrete work done in January of this year, that's 2023 and that set the stage for us to start building the house. Both Justine and I were working full-time jobs up until this point, and I did a little bit of work on the house in February and March, but uh, by April, uh, we had decided that um, I was gonna leave my job and I was gonna work on the house full-time. And so I'm building the house by myself, as you know, if you're following the channel. It has been a learning experience. It's been a lot of fun. It's been frustrating. It's been uh, just, a, it ran, it runs the gamut of emotions as um, I'm sure many of you who are trying to do similar things uh, fully understand. At this point, the sill plate is down and I'm starting to put up the rim joists and the carrying beams that will transfer the load from the roof. I'll also mention that everything you see in the video today, every, all of our progress to date has been done without electricity. So all just battery powered tools, a pass load gas powered nailer. Uh, I do have a small generator that I can uh, power up for things that I need when I need them. But uh, at the time of this recording, we're about three or four days away from actually having some power um, turned on at the site. We have our uh, electric pedestal that will be temporary but the power will be turned on so I'll have outlets that I can use to power um, my tools and just other things ar uh, around the job site uh, and given the nature of the summer uh, the first thing that I'll be powering up is a fan but the weather has actually broken this week so it's been uh, really nice to work in weather that's not uh, completely oppressive. At this point most of the subfloor Framing is complete. I've completed a pocket for the stairwell. We'll create the stairs in a few minutes. The only real issues we ran into up to this point was trying to adjust because of the issues that the concrete contractor caused, which was a, a, a footer that was not perfectly square. So the foundation is not perfectly square. Uh, it's not that far out, so it didn't take a lot to adjust, but there were definitely were adjustments that we had to make along the way so that when we got to the subfloor, when we get to the sheathing, and ultimately when, when we get to the framing, that the house is uh, as square as we need it to be. Uh, and fr from a visual perspective, no one will ever know that it's not perfectly square to begin with. So um, it's been a learning curve, but I expected that. And because I'm 
doing all of the carpentry myself, any issues here on out are mine and mine alone. So I can at least be confident in that. I did do all of the design of the house myself. I did it in, a, in SketchUp Professional. Um, so I built the entire house in SketchUp, did all the design, did all of the floor planning, and got the house basically where I believed I wanted it. At that point, we did hand it off to an architect to make sure that there weren't any concerns from an engineering perspective. And he also, as I knew that he would, had some good suggestions from a floor plan um, perspective and just some other things, uh, certainly details uh, that I wouldn't have known to think about. Um, and that's, of course, why having an architect's a, a good idea. Um, so we do have a full set of plans for the house. Uh, but because I am so familiar with the design, I am also able to use those plans as a guide, but also able to sort of make adjustments along the way. And this is actually an example of that that we're looking at right now. So that little window in this wall section that I'm putting up was from the plans, but after I got it up, I realized that it was a little smaller than what I wanted. So I pulled the window down, I made the window larger, and uh, those are some so adjustments that I am able to make because I'm doing the build and because I know what the impacts are. And it also uh, allows me to basically check everything along the way as I'm building it. Like, is it exactly what I want? And you can actually see that expanded window on the right there. That's about twice the size as it was before, which is just going to give us more visibility when we're looking out the kitchen. We are trying to build this house on a budget. So the simple design and doing most of the work myself will go a long way toward keeping us to that budget. But that will also give us an opportunity to splurge in a couple of areas. One of the big areas is going to be insulation. After the heat wave that we had this year and the likelihood that that sort of heat will just continue, uh, we're going to spray foam the entire house for insulation. I used to be in the spray foam business, and I know how good of a product it is. It's certainly more expensive to put in at the outset, but aside from just energy efficiency costs, it is it, it makes the space more comfortable. It's a much more stable environment just because it reduces all of the unexpected drafts that you'd find in a house that's insulated really in almost any other way. So that's that's one area that we're going to splurge. As far as the build itself goes, getting this LVL in place has been the most difficult single task so far. So this is three 12 inch LVLs that started out at 20 foot in length and I laminated them together to, to create a clear span of about 18 feet 4 inches. And so just getting these up and level and square with the mid walls and parallel with the front wall was a challenge, but taking that extra time really paid off when I was putting these roof rafters in place because every roof rafter was exactly the same length because the span was um, very consistent across the entire building. Here you can see that 18 foot 4 inch clear span that I was mentioning is actually interrupted by a 8 by 8 white oak post that we took from a tree on the property uh, using our sawmill. Uh, so that'll inter interrupt that clear span to provide additional support for the, for the roof and ultimately for a drop ceiling that will go in the kitchen, which is kind of where, that, where we are right now. I did get a lot of questions about the fact that my rafters end at the wall and they don't extend past uh, to create an eave, but we're going to be using rafter tails and uh, nailing two by sixes onto the rafters and extend them out in order to create the eaves. Uh, mostly we're doing that because the eaves on the front side are going to be three feet uh, extended uh, over the uh, past the wall. And so uh, rather than try to do that out of a single rafter, uh, we're going to do that with rafter tails. As far as our timeline, our goal for 2022, which is last year, was to have the foundation completed. And we did get it completed in January of this year, so I counted that as a win. Our goal for this year, 2023, is to have the house completely dried in. So have all of the sheathing up, have all of the, have the roof up. Um, if not, have the windows and doors in. Of course, I can just put plastic over them to dry it in, but I would, I, uh, would like to have the windows and doors in uh, as well before the end of the year. And at that point, um, as we start next year, I can start working inside during the winter and working on the mechanicals and the electricity and plumbing and, and all of that. So, so far, um, I think we're on track. Uh, I feel like I'm making pretty good progress. Uh, only have a few stumbling blocks now and then with weather. 
and a little bit with material delivery. I'm kind of buying things as I go, you know, rather than ordering the entire lumber package at one time and just having it sitting on the site, uh, which may or may not help me in the long run. It just kind of depends how, on how the costs fluctuate. This is the drop ceiling over the kitchen. We decided to go with a drop ceiling because it'll just make the kitchen space a bit cozier and we'll also have a drop ceiling over the bathroom that's opposite this but the entryway and then the whole great room that you can kind of see on the right there will be uh, will remain vaulted and so we just want to get as much space and as much light in the room as we can and the back of the house will be southerly facing so we will also be accruing some passive solar benefits as well but this is where we're at we're about mid-journey, I'd say, in terms of getting the house built. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.